are back, and Carl would like to have a word with you. Oh, wow, Janice, yes. with you. With you. Woo. <laughs> Hi, Carl, what's going on? Hi, Julian. Well, I'm calling from Quebec, in fact. Ah. Um, yeah, up north. And I have a little accent because uh, French is actually my first language, so. Ooh, very sexy, <laughs> Carl. Say, oh, nice. Say like something that. French. Say something French for us. Um, je suis un grand fan de Julian Michaels. I don't know what you said, but that's hot. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> wow. I said I, I said I'm a big fan of Julian Michaels. Even hotter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, honey. Uh, How can we help? No, it's okay. Uh, uh, well, uh, I would like to talk to you about the fact that um, I was uh, I was overweight uh, up until college, okay. and uh, ended up uh, morbidly obese at the beginning of my twenties. Mm -hmm. And in 2010, I was uh, 34 at the time, uh, father of two, and I decided to change my life to become a better role model for my kids. Mm. Um, I ended up losing 100 pounds. Uh, uh, I ran a half marathon, a full one, a triathlon. Wow. I, got cert I got certified as a personal trainer. Uh, I launched initiatives to get people moving on the web and in my community, and I had the chance to participate in two great uh, TV projects up here concerning uh, obesity and weight loss. That's great. Yeah, and I actually just quit the job of uh, the last 15 years to fully work as a trainer, coach, motivational speaker, and work on TV projects. Okay. But I have to, uh, I have to admit that I have days when I still feel like I'm an imposter. What does so, that even mean, like you're an imposter? I don't, well, I, I was wondering if, uh, since we had a lot of similarities mm -hmm. uh, between my story and yours, mm -hmm. uh, when did you stop, like, doubting yourself toward your work? And especially, okay. when did you stop doubting yourself and your relationship towards food? Okay. Well, f all right. So first, tell me what in particular happens that makes you feel like an imposter. Well, uh I don't know, since I'm helping people to get control on mm -hmm. their life, sure. uh, from time to time, I I still have episodes where I feel like I don't have the control over my own life. So uh, I still have, uh, I still have doubt about how I'm, um, how I'm dealing with food. I still have urge, urges from time to time about uh, huge uh, sugary stuff, or you know. So would you think still, ever that that just goes away? That would make you not <laughs> human. That would, yeah, that, I know, would but... that would make you less than he, you not less than human. That would make you superhuman. Yeah, <laughs> honey. I, I mean, first of all, when you look at a lot of people who go into their various professions, often they, the things that they've struggled with in life and overcome, is what has given them the passion to do what they do. So yeah. whether it's a therapist who had a difficult upbringing or uh, a, a trainer who struggled with weight. Um, and when you look at Susie Orman, here was a woman that lost everything financially and out of uh, that financial destruction and uh, having been a victim of bad advice, ended up learning everything that she could about money and investments and became you know the, the money guru in, in America, if not... She, I don't know her international status, but um, yeah. so the, the people who go into um, these types of fields are very often people who have struggled with these issues, and that's what made them become an expert. So if you don't really struggle with something, you're never really compelled to learn about it. So for me, I, I learned about weight loss and fitness and nutrition because I was a fat kid. So it was always yeah. a quest to lose weight and get more fit and look better and feel more confident. And, you know, and then, of course, I got older and it became about, you know, the quality of my life and achieving goals and, you know, overcoming demons and this and that. But that is what makes you, A, relatable and B, uh, what has prompted you to learn everything that there is to know. So, yeah. sure, I mean, of course there are, there are days of backslides and cravings and urges, and what I do when I feel that way is I just practice balance. So I, I realize that perfect doesn't exist. It literally does not exist. And when yeah. I want something, I'm like, all right, I'm not going to have an entire pint of ice cream, but I'll allow myself to have um, 300 calories worth. And when I do, I'll, uh, you know, instead of having, like, the second helping, we had Indian food last night. I didn't have a second helping of Indian food. Instead, I had 300 calories worth of ice cream. 
And I'm like, you know, I just work it in there. I find balance for yeah. it. So I just think that I just think that it's because actually my weight loss went pretty fast, even though I had decided that I had plenty of time because I wanted to actually learn what was a portion and and just eat well. So seriously, I had given myself like six years, but I actually lost 100 pounds in 10 months. Wow. And yeah, That's great. <laughs> and I think that. You know, now I'm I'm helping people, and some of those people have to actually lose the emotional weight before they can actually get rid of the physical weight. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I think I think I was one of those uh, lucky guy that just trained hard and ate better, and actually ended up losing a lot of weight pretty easily, I would say. And I now say I've been easy. working. I mean, I, I yeah, would no, say but... that you did the right things, and your body cooperated, yeah. but. Eating yeah. right and working out is never easy. No, but I mean, um, I think it's just because now for the last year and a half, I've been working more on the emotional weight and actually, um, you know, just making the right choice, but emotionally, just not towards just food and training. Yeah. And, and I don't, you know, I had like big discussions with my mom, with my dad, stuff yeah, like that. And, sure. and I think I'm, I'm kind of just, uh, I don't know. I, I think I'm a bit over overwhelmed these days about uh, just uh, you know. Even though I'm still thinking about when I'll be 40, I'll be like just perfect. I think I'm just looking for uh, a break for something like that, or it just maybe. Sweetie, that I there's no just... such thing as perfect. And yeah, I, this I <laughs> this one um, self help guru, uh, he goes by the name Ram Das, even though I can't for the friggin' life of me remember what his actual name was. And he's the, he was like this big guru who worked with Timothy Leary, and he once said, if you think you're evolved, go home for the weekend. <laughs> like, go home to your parents' house for the weekend. And yeah. even though I know, like, all there is to know about how to overcome, well, not all there is to know, but I know a lot about yeah. uh, understanding myself and working through my issues and tackling my demons. I got a letter from my little sister, and I really thought that I had gotten to a good place where I don't, I don't speak to my dad because he's destructive. But yeah. I thought that I had, I really was like, I'm at peace. Like, I wish him well. I forgive him. Yeah. You know, I, I hope everything goes okay in his life. Like, he hasn't become a better human being. So, like, I can't have him in my life. But I got to this place where I wasn't ruled by my anger. So I get this letter from my little sister the other day. who She's, she's 20 years old. And my dad had done something particularly awful to her. And I just, it brought me right back to that place. And I, I, yeah. I'm just going to be truthful of wishing he was dead. And in the letter, she's like, why won't he just die already? And I got to tell you, I've never said it around my brother or sister because I didn't, you know, they're much younger than me. My brother's 23, yeah. my sister's 20. And it's like, but I used to talk about it like with my shrink, with Heidi. And I was like, I just wish he would die because then it's like, we could just move on. He's like a wrecking ball. And, yeah. you know, and I and I like to wish your father was dead is kind of like a really horrible, horrible feeling. Like You really feel like you're a horrible, horrible person. Yeah. And I got to this place where I was like, he's just damaged. He's just wounded. Poor little wounded bird. Like, And I, I really thought that I had like evolved out of it. And I got that letter from my sister and right away was like, die, you son of a bitch. Just yeah. die. So, listen to me. My my point here is not that I am homicidal, uh, b which clearly I, I have tendencies, but more to the fact, honey, that it's normal to like to have these moments and to have these feelings and to struggle. And the key is to recognize them and get control of them as quickly as possible. I'm not gonna show up to my dad's house and shoot him. So <laughs> to me, that's winning. It's like I have those feelings. I feel like yeah. I've backslided. But I'm like, all right, <sighs> here's what's going on. You know, here's how I'm going to handle it. Here's the most productive way to respond to it. But you have to give yourself permission. You know yeah. what I mean? You've got to give yourself permission to, to have those feelings and to have those moments and to accept that this is an ongoing struggle. And as you begin to accept it, it will become much easier to manage. I don't judge myself when I eat crap. I don't judge myself when I want to kill my father. I go, oh, here we go again. All right, let me get out the tools in the toolbox and try to get control of this thing. And and that's how you do it, babe. And and you're not 
a you're not an imposter you are you're walking the walk you're talking the talk from experience yeah well i think that just the fact that you just to know actually that you go through that you you also go through that i think uh, absolutely going to, it, i think it's going to help me a lot in fact uh, i just you know i've been i've been thinking about you a lot when i do different stuff when i train people and but i think that just uh, knowing that we kind of had that actual link will help me a lot. So um, I, I would like to thank you. I would like to tell you that uh, for me it was, I mean, uh, really special to be talking to you uh, today. And I would also like to tell you that um, I'm actually, uh, I, I uh, pretty much told you all my story except for the fact that I'm now uh, Subway Canada's Commit to Fit Ambassador. Oh. And uh, that I'm going to be at the CanFit Pro. Oh, so excellent! You, yeah, so if you want to come and see me at the Subway Commit the Fit booth, please do. It will be my pleasure to meet you. Oh, I would love to. I will definitely come say hello. Cool. All right. I'm really happy. <laughs> oh, me too. Have a great day. Take care, Jillian. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Carl. Aww.